Welcome to the Influencer Show with your host, Trishon Ben Salmi. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Influencer Show, where I interview people who can help influence the way you live life in a number of different ways. I'm your host, T7, and today we have a very special guest for us. So, if you'd like to simply introduce yourself to listeners, tell them a bit about you and what you do and why you do it. Yeah, thank you, Trishon. Good to be on the show. So my name is Alex Impey. I am the founder of Use of Properties, and we're very much a, a, a niche specialist development company which looks at um, focusing on 18 to 30 year, year olds bringing affordable housing to the market to them. It's, uh, it, it's quite a unique situation because we try and concentrate on the end customer, and we're very much look at things in a holistic manner. So what I mean by that is we try to bring that bespoke living and end-to-end living all in one development. So we bring in the living, bring in the working, we bring in the recreation, and we bring in the health. We do that all under a community banner. And we don't, you know, we do that through mixed use and mixed tenure. And what I mean by that is we have the best of commercial, so national and local businesses, as well as residents, whether it's social, key workers, whether it's private, whether it's co-living, or whether you just want to rent. We've got all those tenants available, so you can pick and choose. It's a really fantastic opportunity to get on the ladder. And, you know, our, our business not motto or our massive transformative purpose is making quality living both affordable and enjoyable for everyone. So that's really what I'm doing at the moment. That's my big why. Uh, you know, I've just explained it in that massive transformative purpose. But a little bit about me. My background is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, as you can tell, my, my accent is not from the south. I'm from the northeast of England, from a place called Hartlepool, uh, where we're known affectionately as monkey hangers. Uh, that, that's a different, that's probably a different podcast that I need to explain that on. But a uh, very interesting tagline, which never leaves me. And I left Hartlepool when I was 18. I studied at Newcastle. I'm a chartered mechanical engineer. So I'm a fellow of the mechanical engineers, which is the highest level that you can reach in the UK as an engineer. And so I studied four years in Newcastle, lived there, had a great time. And then I moved over to Holland. And that was to start my corporate life as an engineer with Shell. And I traveled all over the world, working on large scale projects up to 500 million pounds, delivering some really interesting global infrastructure in the engineering sector, in oil and gas and petroleum took me up to Aberdeen, it took me offshore on oil and gas rigs, I looked after 300 men, a budget of over 100 million, I lived in Dubai, I also worked in Iraq and lived in Iraq for a while which is a very interesting experience, uh, Africa, Americas, all over the place I've, I've been and worked and travelled, so really privileged but uh, as I mentioned um, I'm now out of corporate life and working full time with the business which is a new and exciting challenge in itself. That is absolutely amazing. I definitely think that's, that encapsulates so much, really. And why don't you uh, share with us what was that sort of like that aha moment for you and what did it then teach you? So I think the aha moment, I think it comes at different times. So I had a few aha moments. My first one was what I call a quarter life crisis. And I was about 26 or 27. And I was like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Uh, and that took me on a journey of thinking about what I really wanted to do. And from that back end of that, I started to study part-time astronautics and space engineering, because uh, that's, that's my big passion is space. And um, so that kind of kind of kick-started. That was the start of the aha moment. But life gets in the way sometimes, as you know. And I took a few years and I was in the wilderness and it was, it was not until I was about 32 when the real aha moment struck. And I was in Aberdeen and I was working on a very, um, very, in a very great, you know, a fantastic job opportunity. I was working quite high level. I was in charge of over 300 men and, their, and women and their safety, large budget. I was working maybe 50, 60 hours a week, but it just wasn't sustainable. I had a relationship at the time which was strained and I had to do a lot of traveling. And I just thought, look, there's got to be something different here. But something which can really work to my passions and my strengths. And I started thinking a little bit about more about my, my bigger vision about the space industry, but more so about the shorter term vision and my strengths, which were property. And so 
you know, I started thinking about, well, how can I change the property industry? Because it was ripe for disruption, still very much is. And I started to think about my past. And, I, you know, my mum, I was brought up as a single, in a single parent family. And low income, no income, essentially. And it was really important to have a stable home and a council home to kind of grow as a person, my education, to get me where I was in my career. And I knew that that was an important found foundation and that people needed to to appreciate that more but be given the opportunities to get access to that and on top of that I was also at the time trying to buy a place in London and you know we were trying to buy a two-bedroom apartment it was 500,000 pounds crazy money and I just sat there going you know I'm in the prime of my career part of my prime of my career I was, my partner was as well at the time we you know we were struggling to get on a house on the housing ladder at that point to buy an apartment two-bedroom apartment you know, and at that point, there was a lot of the whole gentrification process came in. Well, I've been in, so there was a lot of animosity between um, those that have gentrified, where it was typically a social housing complex, which was then built next door to a private complex. And there was a lot of animosity. And I, I remember, like, why is all this hatred here? Why, why are these tags being built? Again, there must be some better way to do it. And that's when I started building the use of product mo model looking at this mixed tenure, mixed use, and how we can bring affordability, the social aspects all under one roof and work as a community. Because ultimately my, my biggest, my big vision and my passion is about collaboration. So I want to change the way humans socially interact. And we'll do that through global collaboration and development of STEM technology and applications. So STEM, I mean science, technology, engineering, and maths. And it's my big belief that we'll, help mankind thrive and survive with those applications but we can only do it if we collaborate together so this was the first step in this bigger picture of collaboration and i knew that the, the property industry really needed that support and it was something i could work on i think that's something that is so important but yet like so many people actually pay attention to it especially when it comes to just learning how each and every last one of us need to collaborate in order to add that sort of shine that light, bring that new perspective into play, so to speak, because then by doing so, we're then able to work from a different angle, we're then able to bring so many other perspectives, we're then able to change it up, so it's, um, then able to be understandable for people despite of where they come from, really. And how do you prefer to influence others to change what they live their lives for the better? Uh, influence it's a, an interesting concept um, I'm a big believer of trying to get people to understand on their own wavelength we're all different we're all human beings that have different wants and needs and me trying to force my opinion onto you for instance Trey or to your brothers or your sisters or your mum it's, it's, you can't do that because not everyone is the same shape it's like square peg round hole sometimes it doesn't fit the, the way to do it is give people the tools to understand how they can affect change themselves. So I'm a big believer of bringing people onto the journey. Uh, yes, we need to look at a, a larger problem. You sometimes have a social problem. You sometimes have a product problem, sometimes a business problem. But bring, have a common goal where everyone can get behind it. And that's, you know, for me, the key here was the, our massive transformative purpose. That is the, the North Star, that is the guiding light, which not just our employees for you to so get behind, not just for me, but people who want to use that product, the, the customers, the residents, the commercial tenants, they all believe into that. If you've got something that's bigger than you, bigger than, um, you know, bigger than society, that can really generate a lot of traction. And then it doesn't become your idea, it becomes a collective idea. And that's when collaboration really comes in. Mm, exactly. I definitely think that's important, especially how you said about um, we can add that thing, but it's about just giving them the, the, the choice to then decide whether they'd like to take it aboard or whether they believe that it's not something that quite suits their needs at this moment, as opposed to simply chucking it all at them, because then in the end, it actually tends to push them a lot further than they were at the start, really. And what would you say people could do to? stay motivated during moments of crisis oh stay motivated i don't know your motivation might be slightly different from mine trey 
Um, I, 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 to be honest, a beer or a gin and tonic does motivate me quite often these days. But um, I'm guessing that's not the type of motivation you're after. I think for me, the motivation is, or how to keep people to get motivated is around personal development. That's one of my big values as a person. Um, and I think that if you are interested in yourself and, and making a better version of you and you know, really working on those aspects, that can provide motivation to do something different move on to, to evolve bigger than from what you are i think you don't just need uh, your your personal development you need to have another couple of things now i call this the humble square and essentially there's four things to get that kind of motivation or that contentment one is your your why the second one are your values the third one is your life key result areas that determines what success is for you and your authentic self you bring those together and if you've got your values and your why you've always got that north star you've always got the the set of principles to make decisions by and you can always be motivated that every day you get out of the bed you're working on your values that make you feel happier make you feel better but also you that you're doing something that you love and are passionate about at the end of the day if we do something we're not passionate about then why are we in it you know why spend a third of your life working on something when you're not even interested? So the motivation's got to come from those 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 elements. I definitely agree with that. I think what I really liked there was when um, how you touched on uh, creating a better version of an improved version of ourselves. Because when people get into personal development, they often think there's nothing, there's no huge issue with me, so I don't need to get into this. But it's about being able to understand there's always room for improvement i think that's something that people need to become more aware of because yes you may be amazing now but then you can be even better and i think it's something that just being able to have that sort of like that growth mindset you're then able to see that there's always more that you can achieve there's always more that you can be and i think that's something that especially people around my age we actually fail to understand how that can actually benefit us really mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, the way I see this, Trey, is, and I've heard this explained a few times, quite similar. It's like an operating system. Like on your phone, you've got, you know, if you've got an Apple phone, you've got iOS 9 or 12 or 15, whatever we're on now. But every couple of weeks, there's a new update coming out because that operating or that mode of operation it becomes outdated. And to be honest, our mode of operation telling us what is right or wrong is outdated every day. You know, there's so much information out there. It's impossible to be up to date, to be honest. The idea is just to keep that operating system at the highest level as possible. So we need to upboot or reboot our system or upgrade our operational system on a constant basis. Personal development is the tool to do that, to make sure that your system, your body, whether that's physical, spiritual, and everything around you is operating at the highest level it can. Yeah, I def definitely agree with that, definitely. And if you had a megaphone and you could say one thing to the world that would have a lasting influence, what would it be and why? It, it would be definitely around collaboration. That if we want to survive and thrive as humankind as a species, we've got to start working together. And don't ever see, you know, people see competition and they see they just close up because they feel that they're going to lose an opportunity or the money, whatever it is. But collaboration is so much bigger and it can actually provide more opportunities in life than insular working. And I mentioned it before, my vision is, you know, change how we act and interact as, as human beings and that social interaction piece. Because if we can then learn to trust, we can then work together, not just me and you, but, you know, maybe there's Michael in Barbados or Frank, in the Netherlands, you know, or, or Paul in the Philippines. But if we're all working globally on the same important matters, uh, then there's a lot of hope to make those positive changes that we need to do as humans to, in order to survive. So I would be telling people to collaborate more often, to, re, to, to, to give freely of their information in a responsible manner, because everyone, you can't just give away all your IP, but to do it in a responsible and ethical way that's going to help promote humanity. No, exactly. I definitely agree because then being able to 
share your message around, you're then able to improve it because they may, they may see this, they might think it's amazing, and then they might see these things, they might advise you to tweak it and actually make it even better. I think it's something that is definitely something that we should utilize a lot more because by doing so, we're then able to improve our stuff and then also we're able to work together and then it's just about being able to understand that yes you may get far with this it may be good but you can get even further with the help of others so it's about being able to understand like would you like a little slice of the power or a bigger slice it's just something it's literally just basics really it's definitely something that we need to take into account a lot more and what would you um say what are like the top three lessons that you've learned along your life Top three lessons. Okay, so I think the first lesson is communication. I think communication is, you know, and I say that is being a good listener because that's the real key to communication. It's not just being able to talk, not being able to verbalize. You know, we, we all communicate through different ways, whether it's body language, or through verbal language through you know, the, the, the mental images that we can project and, and all of that kind of thing. I think it's been a good listener. So really sitting down and understanding what people want. Because when you understand what somebody wants and you can really internalize that, you, you create magic moments, but op really big opportunities. Um, so I think, being, I'm, and I'm guilty, I'm not a good listener. I, I'm one of those people who like to help but need to sit back and listen more. And it's something I, you know, I don't think we ever become perfect listeners, but it's something we can keep working on. Um, another piece of advice or another area of you know, really importance is I would, I would say it's again, the collaboration piece. So working with people, um, not, not taking those people for granted and taking the information and the relationship to build together because when you collaborate and you, you keep those relationships in a large circle, it opens up some fantastic opportunities. And I look at my life within my whole corporate life and the friends I've made and you know some of the places where they live now and the opportunities I've had, not just to visit them, holidays, but also potential work relationships. That's a, a really fantastic moment. And I think the third piece would be around personal development. And I can't explain how important it is that if you want to succeed in life, you first have to put the effort into yourself. And I always use this example, um, you know, when you're on the on a plane and the flight attendant, you know, she's explaining to you while well, you've got your headphones in, no doubt, and listen to your beats. And she's like, oh, look at me, look at me. So she takes it off and she starts going through her, her speech. She gets onto one really important topic, which is about in the event of a descent, oxygen will drop from the cabins. Uh, the first thing you need to do is put the oxygen on yourself before helping others. Why? Because if you don't help yourself and you've passed out, how can you help anyone else? And it's the same as personal development. How can you expect to help others and contribute to others if you don't look after yourself first? So I'm a big believer that, you know, put the time and effort in. Mm. If you put the effort into you, you will be rewarded a hundred times more. And I'm not just talking about health and i'm talking about wealth i'm talking about knowledge spiritual work you know you name it careers languages all of those areas make those times put in goals put in set points under each one of those those pieces and keep a track of them and keep on improving yourself and you know you will become that better version mm, i def definitely get definitely makes sense i think that's something that like many people actually tend to do they tend to give until the until the point where they're empty and they wonder why they feel so drained they feel so stressed and all of that as you said it's just about learning to look after yourself and then going to look after others at the after you had then nourished and done everything that you need first i definitely think that's something that people tend to underestimate how important it is really and if you had to be like another person for one day who would it be and why if I had to be somebody else, yeah. who would I be? Mm. Really interesting question. I think I would be Leonardo da Vinci because Leonardo da Vinci, famous Italian painter, sculptor, engineer, 
philosopher. You know, he he's, he pretty much did everything. He is the the you know if if you were looking at really cool dudes today, he would be one of the cool dudes that you would all aspire to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I look at some of as an engineer, I look at some of the the inventions that he brought around, uh, which also included the helicopter, by the by the way, yeah. and. Just to sit in the mind of someone who's so talented, but across a range of really difficult subjects. You know, I'm, a, I'm you know, I, I class myself as a good engineer, and I hope, I hope other people do too. But I am a rubbish artist. You know, trying, you know, paint the Sistine Chapel out of my glandular, but try, you know, trying to make the, um, you know, the, the 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 atypical man. I forgot the name of the the drawing he made. Um, you know, all of those kind of things. I just it would be stick men. It would be terrible. Like it'd just be the worst drawing painter in the world. So to have that ability to cross disciplines, but really have that overall mindset, it would be uh, really cool to to understand and kind of uh, be part of. Mm, I def- definitely understand, especially just being able to just like even just get inside their mind, really, just to see how like just so much going on, especially how they're then able to utilize that knowledge understanding in so many uh, diverse ways it's just absolutely amazing really and what are your sort of like views on the word legacy and what legacy would you like to leave legacy interesting topic an interesting word um i sometimes feel that legacy has got a bit of a solo connotation so it can be a little bit not, not narcissistic but feel like it's like you're what you're trying to leave here i don't think it would be right if my vision is all about collaboration and if i read you know i read i've got a vision that i read every day before i start work it cements what i'm doing why i'm doing it and i'm really careful with my how i structured that and my vision actually says we as in me and my team will change human social action fracture through global collaboration so if i've got a a vision like that would be a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for, hypocritical, if I then started to speak about my legacy. But if I had to look at legacy in general to leave the world as, as part of the business we're creating, it would be to leave the world in a much stronger place than it is now for my grandchildren, your grandchildren, and really have that emphasis on how, how we develop globally with our STEM, te- STEM developments and applications. Because, you know, science, technology, engineering, that's what's going to drive us forward. Yeah. And I'm not saying this is no disrespect to all of the disciplines and options in the world. But it's my personal belief that those those areas will really drive us to the next level of evolution, but also protect us. Mm. So um, that would be the legacy I would love to leave for humanity from my business. That's actually amazing. And talking about like, like teaching, disciplines, things like that. Could you share some advice that you would give to your younger self? Uh, my younger self. So I, I, I mentioned this to your younger brother and I, I, I did write a chapter for a guy called Max Stokes. I know you know Max. I think you, you spoke at Brooklyn's a while back. And I think your mum also wrote a chapter in his book. And it, that was all about advice to younger self. And in that book, what I tried to explain was to how to live a little bit more of a contented life. And I talked about this humble square, which I came up with. And this humble square is, is believe it or not, a square. And a square is one of the most, infor- most important geometric shapes in engineering. You know, look everywhere, uh, look at houses, look at windows. They're all squares in shape, you know? And it's a strong shape. It's not the strongest, but it's a very, very strong, robust shape that can be very versatile. And in those four corners, we, we talked about them before, to make that square and make its form, you need your vision, your values, your life key result areas, and then your authentic self. You have all those four, you've got a strong shape, you've got strong support, and you've got contentment, fulfillment, and you've got a clear vision to a happy life. And I think what I would give my advice to myself would be to work more on those aspects. And a li- more so, the vision and, and the values would be great, because once you got, once you know where you're going in life, and you've got your values to help decide decisions and make make those difficult decisions to get to your vision, the only thing that's left out is this these life key result areas. 
And life careers on air is a super important trait because they're what makes success for you because your success is different from my success. You know, my success is, you know, have a beer and get into space. That's probably not your success, you know, it's completely different. So you, and try and never, 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 list, never, ever follow someone else's success philosophy because it won't work, it won't make you happy. And I, you know, there's too many of us caught up in what's success. You know, I've got to get a Mercedes, I've got to get a car, I've got to get a house, I need, you know, 700 children, I need, you know, a fantastic wife, a mother, dad. That's not, that's society's success. Forget that. Follow what, is, what makes you happy and, su- and successful in your life. And I wish I'd listened to that or had that bit of advice when I was growing up because I would have probably not made as many er- erratic decisions <laughs> along the way. No, I definitely think that's important, especially now for like people, as I said, my, more my age, like the way that social media has been and everything, there's this whole facade there of, as to how success looks and things like that. And I think it's something that we need to redefine as to what it means for us, as you said, because then by doing so and being that authentic, we're then able to actually see as to why we want it in the first place, what, it, what we're looking for, what we're longing for, different things like that. And then we're able to dig deeper as to what actually made us just like get into that whole loop in the first place really and I think that's something that especially now more than ever people are suddenly and very slowly starting to dig more into and start to understand actually what makes them tick and different things like that so could you share some advice for those who may be starting a new venture and just needing that little words of encouragement so when starting a new venture I think the the real key, what you need is persistence. Uh, and it's not blind persistence because you've got to know, you've got to know two things. When, it's called pivoting, right? When to give up or when to change your idea. Because having blind persistence but with the wrong idea is not a good, good thing to have. Yeah, have faith in your ability. But if the other external markers around you are telling you something different, you then got the option, do you pivot to something different or do you give up? Never go for the give up, but never be afraid to pivot and change your direction because being too blind and persistent is going to get you in the wrong route. So persistence is key. Backing your your idea, having the determination to follow through. You will have a lot of people criticizing you. Critics are good. That's a good thing. Um make sure that you listen to people around you so get the right team and that that's not just employees and people who you work with but that's also mentors because they can then give you those guidance and wisdoms you know when that blind persistence sometimes you will be blind even to the things you can see that's when it's good to have those advisors around you to help you so having that persistence continuing to go with your vision but always having that flexibility to pivot to a, to a new direction, super, super powerful. Mm, that's amazing. Because then being able to understand that, yes, this idea is amazing. I still want to take this forward, but there's a new way that I can go about doing so. It's something that it then gives you that extra hope really, as to I can still achieve this, but maybe not in the way that I planned out initially. And where can the listeners find you if they'd like to find out about any upcoming things that you may have? Ah, so your listeners can find me uh, on LinkedIn. So if you just type in Alex Impey, then you will find me there. You can check me out on my, my personal website, which is aleximpey.com. I'm also on Facebook if you want to, you know, just have a chat with me, mentorship or and business ideas. Or if you want to go into the property side, you can find my business user, which is spelled X-U-S-A. So go www.user.co.uk. And you can find out all about us on there. I'm sure you'll put them all in the show notes and everything. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's absolutely amazing. I really do urge that you listeners do go and check them out. And are there any closing words of encouragement that you'd like to leave if you listen? No, I think um, I think there's a lot. We've, we've covered a lot today. Yeah. And something that, I, you know, it's funny, it keeps sticking in my mind. Every time I read a book, I've read this about three times now. And it's a famous quote by Albert Einstein. So again, although he's a physicist, another one of my heroes, you can see this, the STEM connection here. 
and he said that we won't be able that, that the the same level of thinking that we need to create a problem is not what we need to solve that problem. Mm. So in order to solve that problem, we need a whole different mindset, yeah, whole different game. And what I, I say that because if there's people, you know, young people like yourself looking to tackle an issue, first of issue is find a problem. Don't create a solution and fit it to a problem. Find a problem. Once you've got that problem, you've got to bring a whole different game to it. Open up your mind. Think about how you can completely change that that area. Don't come up with that same mindset. So I would leave those parting words with yourself and your your listeners, uh, and I'd hope to you know eventually and see in the future the, the success that that brings. Definitely, definitely. I'd like to thank you for coming on the Influencer Show today. I really do enjoy it. No worries. Thank you very much for having me. Much appreciated. Thank you. I really do urge that you listeners do go and check them out, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them below, and I'll see you next time.